An intimate relationship with God is worth building and worth cultivating. And the amazing thing is that it's not only limited to a group of people like pastors, evangelists, musicians, or any other person. It's available for any person who is willing to cultivate and to build a personal and intimate relationship with God. Come near to God and He will come near to you. James 4, 8 it's quite fascinating that both human beings and God desire to have an intimate and personal relationship with each other. But God already has paid the price for us to come into communion with Him and to have a very intimate, personal and lovely fellowship with us. So now it is on our part as human beings to cultivate and to grow this relationship that God has called us into. Today, I'll be continuing on our two-part series on how to cultivate an intimate and personal relationship with God. We've got seven tips, but so far we've covered three. Today, we'll be moving from point number four. And point number four for today is prayer. Prayer is a vital tool on cultivating a relationship with God. In simple terms, prayer is communication with God. And you know, for every relationship to survive or to be fruitful, communication is key. We saw this on Jesus. While he was work, walking on earth, he was constantly praying and talking to his father concerning his life and concerning the assignment that he came to do on earth. So just like Jesus, we are also on assignment on this earth. Therefore, we need insight and, com and communication from God to tell us wh where to go and what to do as well. So I do think that prayer is very, very necessary for you to succeed in your life and also to succeed in your assignment that God has given you. It's, and it's great to know that because we've got God as our Father, He is always interested and always wanting to hear from us as well. The disciples in Luke 11 saw that Jesus was constantly praying and then they had to go to Him according to Luke 11 verse 1 to 3. So let's read that verse now. It says, Once Jesus was in a certain place praying, as He finished, one of his disciples came to him and said, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. Jesus said, this is how you should pray. From this, we see that prayer can be taught and prayer can be learned. If you are desiring to cultivate your relationship with God, but you see that you are lacking in the area of prayer, it can be taught and you can also learn it as well. One of the key things that we need to remember is that we've got the Holy Spirit to help us to pray and also He also knows what we need to pray for as well. So don't forget to ask the Holy Spirit to help you in that re uh, regard as well. Also, there are books and articles and sermons on how to cultivate your prayer life as well. So don't be in despair or don't be discouraged, but know that prayer can be taught and you can also learn how to pray. You know, we do have our enemy, the devil, who is consistently on our backs, trying to prevent us from praying and communicating with God concerning our lives. So whenever he tries to, to bring you down or even tries to discourage you, tell him who you are in God that God is your father. Like Jesus taught us to pray, he said, when we enter into our prayer place, we need to say, our father who art in heaven. And that's relationship there. Romans 8, 26 in the Amplified, it says, in the same way, the spirit comes to us and helps us in our weakness. We do not know what prayer to offer or how to offer it as we should. But the spirit himself knows our need and at the right time intercedes on our behalf with, with sighs and groanings too deep for words. We've got the Holy Spirit to help us to pray. 
So every time you lock yourself in the room, you can always say, Holy Spirit, help me. And remember, prayer is not bound by time or by location or by place. Remember, God is an omnipresent God. So you can pray anywhere. You can pray everywhere <laughs> and every time. You can pray in the morning. You can pray in the afternoon. You can pray at night. So anytime you feel like praying or you want to talk to him, you can talk to him at any place, anytime, and anyway. Point number five, learn to hear him. It's amazing that in prayer, we get to talk to God and God speaks back to us. So after you have prayed or even during prayer, we need to cultivate the attitude of hearing God. Because sometimes we do enter into a time of prayer and immediately we want to talk and talk and talk. <laughs> but one of the key things and which is very, very important is to hear what God is saying. Check out John 10, John 10, 27, 28. It says, the sheep that are my own hear my voice and listen to me. It says, I know them and they follow me. And I give them eternal life, and they will never ever by any means perish, and no one will ever snatch them out of my hand. That's Jesus speaking. He is saying that his own sheep, they hear his voice. And as you hear his voice, you are, a you are able to follow his leading. The Bible says that you will hear a voice behind you telling, this is the way to go. So more than anything, hearing from God is quite beneficial to you because it helps to direct your path. Hearing God's voice is quite comforting, strengthening, and also encouraging as well. Knowing that you are not alone and you are constantly being led by His voice and constantly hearing from Him, it gives you assurance that He is with you and He is also hearing you speak to Him as well. But remember, hearing God's voice takes practice. It doesn't happen overnight. As you keep on hearing Him and obeying Him, you will actually strengthen yourself and strengthen your hearing ability. And therefore, you'll be able to hear Him and distinguish His voice from many other voices. Because there are so many voices that are speaking out, out there negative voices, the devil trying to shout and shout on top of your head <laughs> to discourage you and for you to not hear from God. But once you keep on learning, keep on practicing to hear his voice, and then you'll be able to walk with him successfully and constantly be in fellowship with him. It might be tiring to keep on talking to somebody who is not replying you or who is not talking to you back. And the assurance that we have from God is that he hears when we speak. And now we also know that we can hear him speak to us as well. God speaks in different ways. God speaks through his word, through books, and through the people that he has put around us as well. So be attentive and try to constantly hear from him and don't expect him to speak the same way every time. So God will speak to you in different ways based on the situation that you find yourself in. But the one thing that assures you that it is God that is speaking, his word comes with peace. So when you identify peace in every way that he is speaking to you, then you'll know that this is God. Now point number six learn to trust him you know doubt is one of the things that hurt god the most the bible is full of promises on what he intends to do for us his children but now when you are doubting him you won't be able to fully experience what he has in stock for you and that hurts god so much i know as a parent that when you promise your children that you will do something for them, but now they don't believe you, it can be discouraging and also hurtful as well. <laughs> I do remember my three-year-old son, 
I had promised that or I had told him that I'm gonna buy him a hamburger that he loves so much the way he just looked at me like <laughs> he didn't believe me I don't know why or maybe because it's his father who is constantly buying him this hamburger but that day I was ready to buy for him but because of his disbelief of me buying him his favorite food we just had to come home fry an egg and give him bread and he ate it so when we don't believe God or we don't trust him we lose out on all of the promises that he has for us as well Hebrews 11 verse 6 says but without faith it's impossible to walk with God and please him for whoever comes near to God must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who earnestly and diligently seek him you know there is a reward in seeking God and God wants us to believe that he exists and also he rewards us for seeking him as well as we are looking to God and learning to love him and to fellowship with him we need to learn to build our trust we need to trust his word that what he says he will do he will do that who he says he is he is if he has said he is your provider believe that he will provide for you if he says he will be your friend believe that he will befriend you if he calls himself a comforter believe that he will comfort you but sometimes all of these names that we have called God they come to us during tough seasons and it's during those tough seasons that you need to believe and to trust him as well without wavering and without doubting one of the verses that really shock me or can i say really surprised me is this he that doubts must not even think that he will receive anything from god oh that is painful <laughs> it's painful to hear that but god is saying that don't doubt him trust him and believe that he will do what he says he will do and obviously god has built up a record for himself that he is a faithful God who stands on his word because he says that he has exalted his word above his name. So that's how he says, that's how much he says he can be trusted. So trust is earned and God has already earned our trust through the things that he has done for us. So we just need to learn him while we are praying and while we are hearing his voice, don't forget. That we need to trust him as well now point number seven we need to learn to obey him obedience to God is his love language <laughs> he's always saying that if you love me you will do this if you love me you will obey my commandments so when you say that you are in love with God you are saying that I am obeying God <laughs> God measures your love by your level of obedience to him so if you are constantly not obeying him it's an indication that your love for God is a bit rocky a bit shaky <laughs> so what you need to do is to learn to obey him if perhaps you have missed it once or twice or three times or hundred times God is constantly giving us opportunities to obey him as well let's look at John 14 John 14, 14, 15 in the Amplified says, If you ask me anything in my name as my representative, I will do it. If you really love me, you will keep and obey my commands. The amazing thing is this. God can never ask you to do something that he has not done before or something that he has not given you the capacity and the ability to do. Rest assured is that when God asks you to do something, he has given you the capacity and the ability to do what he has said you should do. So be confident and be confident that when you are obeying him, there is always a reward. And when you are obeying him, you are expressing your love to him as well. So if you have watched this video until this far, thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. Check out my previous video 
on part one of this video and check out some of my vlogs that I get to share of my family. Thank you so much. I'll see you on the next one. Have a lovely day.